speech. Now, I look to Adrian Woodridge to continue the case for opposition. I think the secretary was talking earlier about a drink called the Silver Spoon. And I hope plenty of you will be drinking the Silver Spoon later on this evening. But um, as she spoke about that, it reminded me a story about, uh, of a story about the 10th Earl of Weems, who was interviewed in 1837 for a place at Christ Church College, Oxford. And the interviewer said, this is the single question he got, how's your father? His reply was, my father's very well. He passed with flying colors, and he got into Christ Church and spent three glorious years drinking, partying, hunting, hanging out with his own class because Oxford was an aristocratic university and Christ Church was a very aristocratic college, not doing very much work because most people at that time just did past degrees. They didn't do any class of degree. Uh, having a great time. This was the pre-meritocratic world. Wonderful for people who were not meritocrats themselves, uh, wonderful for people who were earls, but not so wonderful for the poor, most of whom became, as it were, mute, inglorious Miltons, people who didn't have a chance to discover or express their talents. Um, and I think it's very important to remember that um, meritocracy is something that we so much take for granted that we can ignore the benefits. When we apply for a job, we expect to be judged on our merits. We expect that we won't be discriminated against because of our race, our gender, our sexuality. Indeed, that's legally encoded. That is because of meritocracy. We expect that all children will have something like an equal opportunity in life. They will go to school, they will have a chance to go to secondary school and, to, and on to university. That is because of meritocracy. We expect that society will be judged by its ability to promote social mobility. That is because of the meritocratic revolution. All the building blocks of the modern world are relatively recent inventions, inventions created because of the great meritocratic revolution. Throughout most of human history, people have inherited their position in society. They've been born to a certain position and they haven't been able to move from it. Remember the sort of the hymn, uh, the rich man at his castle, in his castle, the poor man in his, at, at the gate. Uh, God ordered their estates and left them to, to do exactly what their parents did before them. Um, and social mobility was something through most of human history that was despised, disliked, or something that was regarded as very worrying. Think of Shakespeare, um, Troilus and Cressida, um, when Shakespeare says, um, take but degree away, untune that string, and oh, what discord follows. Jobs were allocated on the basis of inheritance, nepotism, patronage, um, and the notion that there should be any real connection between how good you were at doing something and having the job in the first place was something that just wasn't, uh, wasn't accepted. When I was doing my research for my book, I came across a woman um, uh, called Margaret Scott in 1783, who was earning 200 pounds a year as a wet nurse for the Prince of Wales. Now, 200 pounds a year in that time was a lot of money, and it was particularly a lot of money because at that time the Prince of Wales was 23 years old. So we have a whole series of assumptions about the world that are actually relatively recent and are the results of a series of revolutions. They're the result of the Industrial Revolution, which me meant that you could get um, business on the basis of your merits, that, that, that jobs were given to people in great factories on the basis of their ability to, to contribute to society. We had the American Revolution, which designed itself to replace an aristocracy, uh, what they call the tinsel aristocracy, with an aristocracy of talent, a natural aristocracy. The French Revolution, which it put the principle of um, open careers, a career open to talent at the heart of society. Um, we had the Gladstonian Revolution. We have Gladstone over there in Britain who put the idea of open competition and examinations right at the heart of society and displaced these earlier principles of lineage, venality, buying jobs, nepotism, and the rest of them. And 
all of this broadened out into bigger and bigger and more general opportunities in society as a mass education system was created. And what we did by having that revolution is we created a more just society, a society in which people were promoted according to their abilities, a huge improvement in the position of women. Um, now, more than half of places in universities are occupied by women. Up until 1948, you couldn't even take a degree as a woman in Cambridge. A massive revolution. Opportunities were, were handed out to the, not handed out, were, were, were demanded and taken by the working classes. A huge surge of working class people into the university system, into, uh, um, edu into the school system. After 1944, with the, the Great Education Act of that year, an education act that was designed to be meritocratic above all else, you have um, a surge of working class people into education and on into the professions, a change in the nature of society. Ethnic minorities seize on the idea of meritocracy. You have um, Martin Luther King talking about people being judged by the content of their character as individuals, not as members of groups. This revolutionary principle changes the nature of the world. It creates a more just society, but it also creates a much more efficient society. It creates a society in which productivity is valued. Public companies, publicly owned companies, are much more efficient than family owned companies. Uh, countries such as Sweden, uh, Denmark, the Nordic countries, or indeed England, countries that value uh, meritocracy and hate corruption are much more efficient than, let's say, Greece or Italy, which are based on clientelism or nepotism or that sort of um, non-meritocratic system. So, so what's you, of information? Quickly. Sir, our burden is obviously not to defend aristocracy or women or ethnic minorities not being admitted to university. We're talking about a much more egalitarian system where your talents and your efforts do not justify whatever position you are in society. So please defend that alternative. Well, well first of all, why I concentrated on just how big a revolution that is, the rise of meritocracy, is to show just how much change has been introduced and how precarious meritocracy, meritocracy is. It would be very easy to go back to the previous system. But I, I would say of what you said before, you spent a lot of time demonstrating that we don't live in a perfect meritocracy. Absolutely, we don't live in a perfect meritocracy. We do have problems whereby par rich parents give advantages to their children. We do have problems whereby the gap between the rich and the poor is growing. But what is the solution to that problem? Is the solution to that problem less meritocracy? I submit to you that it's not less meritocracy, it is more meritocracy. Let's advance meritocracy. So let's, talk, let, let's not have less meritocracy, let's have more meritocracy. And indeed, we are moving in that direction. We are moving in that direction. Oxford University is doing a great deal in that direction, creating foundation schools, reducing the, the, the number of people from schools like your own, Westminster, um, and creating more opportunities for people. From schools like, like, like my comrade here in arms. So we moved in, we're moving in the right direction. You have schools like Brampton Manor Academy, which gets more children every year into Oxford and Cambridge than Eton College does. So we're moving. So what? I, I'll ignore that comment. <laughs> so we're moving towards a more meritocratic system. And as I've demonstrated to you, a meritocratic system is a juster system, and it's also a more efficient system, a more productive system, a system which creates the sort of economic surplus that we need to have a vibrant, flourishing welfare state. And let me go on now to say, what is the alternative? Daniel Markovitz was extremely eloquent about how terrible meritocracy is and what a burden it replaces. But what is, the, what is the alternative? Is the alternative an egalitarian society in which everybody's equal? Well, go to, go to Cuba, go to Venezuela. Egalitarian societies are basket yes. cases. Or, what, or, 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 or is the society a sort of siesta society in which we don't do, we don't do any exams? 
we have an easy time. None of us want to work. All of us want to laze around. All of us want to stay in bed all day. Is that a good way of organizing society? It's very it's fun to say, oh, you have to work at McKinsey's. Oh, you have to work at Goldman Sachs. How awful it is to do that. But if we're to be a productive society, an efficient society, if we're to have world-class scholars, like Daniel Markovitz, we've got to work hard. We've got to advance to the frontiers of knowledge yeah. through effort, not through siestas, not through lazing around. <laughs> and then we have another distinguished opponent of meritocracy in, in, in the form of, um, how long have I got? <laughs> no time. I just want to add one more thing. We have, we, we, we have the idea of um, Michael Sandel, who says we should have a lottery system. He said we should have a lottery of the competence. As long as you're competent, you, you then, your name is put into a hat, a great sorting hat, and you have a lottery system. Isn't that appalling? Isn't that a terrible idea? Can you imagine if um, you selected people just because they're competent? I've worked for The Economist for 32 years. We do not select people at The Economist. We don't have people applying and say, oh, he's all right, he's competent. You want to elect people because they're excellent, yeah. because they're first class, because they're at the cutting edge, because they're going to be able to contribute excellence to the world. So I beg you to vote against this foolish motion, vote in favour of excellence uh, against mere competence, walk through uh, the nose, um, and um, thank you.